iFixit has its latest target. It's McDonald's. They lied about Asus's phones being dead. Ah, but they didn't lie about Battle Mage GPUs. They're coming. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. What is Kyler doing over there? We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news like fun. <laughs> well, you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, August 30th, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about how iFixit wants to repair McDonald's ice cream machines. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in for this future. They published a video discussing the fact that they bought their own Taylor ice cream machine, the one that you find in McDonald's, and they ran into a whole bunch of problems because the error codes are nonsensical, the manual doesn't reference things, it contradicts itself, etc. And iFixit believes that this is a right to repair issue and that there are easily replaceable parts that you can get by just unscrewing things, regular screws, not even fancy security screws or nothing. And they also discuss the fact that Taylor, the company that makes these ice cream machines, 25% of their annual revenue comes from servicing. Of course it does. So they have a high incentive to make sure that they make it very difficult for these companies to repair these things. There was a company you might remember a while back that made a little device that could actually read the error codes and translate it into real English. But it turns out McDonald's took it into their own hands and told all of their franchisees, do not use this device. You know, I'm thinking there's some money. <laughs> there might be Exchange some money in there. in there. So what iFixit is seeking to do is every three years, Congress allows them to petition, hey, there are certain exclusions that should be made to the DMCA or the Digital Millennium Copyright Act so that they can repair things. They've done this before with Xboxes as well as tractors and smartphones, mm -hmm. and they believe they can get it passed when it comes to corporate equipment such as the McDonald's ice cream machine. So it's intriguing to see that they're taking it on. I would like to see this happen. More service replaceability, even in the corporate sector could be good, but we do have to think, where's, how is Taylor gonna make up 25% of their profits? I don't care, I wanna live in a world where McDonald's ice cream machines are always working. You heard it here first. But in case you're looking to repair your PC, you can check out today's video sponsor, Silverstone, and their Farallina cases that actually won't break your bank and make it so that your PC looks good too. And by repair, I just mean upgrade. Because that's the good thing about building PCs is that you can do what you want to it. Hooray! Silverstone's fair lineup of cases have all of the different feature sets that you could possibly want. Whether you want something that's flashy and gaming and RGB with addressable lights and all of that with tempered glass, they have that in the fair R1, 312Z, 511Z, and the 512Z. But if you want a more reserved, home business type deal where you're just getting little classy builds going on. They have that in the 513, 311, and 313. Whether you want bling in RGB or you want functional looks, you can get the fair lineup of cases at the links in the video description to build out your PC the way that you would want it to look. Also, while not breaking the bank because they come in at very respectable price points. Check out the fair lineup of cases at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. And it looks like MetaQuest is gonna iFix they're like they're gonna leg fix it uh, it has now come out in the beta application of quest home oh, legs <laughs> so the funny thing is this doesn't actually exist in horizon worlds but it does exist in their quest home setup and this is what it's gonna look like this is exactly what the metaverse needed look at that person dancing in my video buffering it's almost like i'm there they announced this 10 months ago reese it was 10 months ago that zuck jumped around on stage in meta <laughs> reality and they have their upcoming meta connect on september 27th maybe they'll fully roll out legs not just in a beta program we'll have to see but Under those legs you gotta think for legs i just don't have them oh that's fair but speaking of more hypey buzzwords google is bringing out an invisible digital watermark to ai art they're gonna call it synth id and they're gonna roll it out in limited numbers to their current imogen AI art generator so that they can figure out how they can best do this. Because one of the biggest problems that people seem to have with AI art is it's very difficult to know what's going on. Is this human generated? Is this AI generated? Is it real? Is it something that's a mishmash of the otherwise? But Google doesn't really talk about how they're implementing it, specifically saying finding the right balance between imperceptibility and robustness to image manipulations is difficult. We designed Synth ID so it doesn't compromise image quality and allows the watermark to remain detected even after modifications like adding filters, changing colors, and saving with various lossy compression schemes most commonly used for JPEGs. Interesting. I wonder how they do it. No, you don't. 
I do. No, you don't know anything I about I want to know how they do it. How to watermark things. What are you going to watermark? I'm not going to... You're going to know. watermark Solomon Auto Group? Yeah. Wait, I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> yeah, you're just like fully promoting a local car dealership. American cosplay. <laughs> Well, can you cosplay us up some deals, Reese, please? I got you. How are we transitioning? I don't know. I don't know. We don't have legs. Legs! <laughs> we will get you some deals, starting off today with MSI's Pro Z690P. The DDR4 LGA 1700 motherboard is currently going for only $129.99, making it $60 off. But then if you want some headphone goodness, we have the Sony WH-XB910N, which is their wireless noise cancelling headphones with a little bit of extra bass boost, if you like that kind of thing, which you can currently pick up for only $149.99, making it $100 off. Oh, that's not bad. I love those headphones you know what it's not as good a deal as the soundcore space ones that we had as the sponsor the other day these are 100 bucks not on sale hey yo and they're adaptive noise cancellation i can't hear you you can't wow. hear me but then lastly we have the asrock radeon rx 6800 xt phantom gaming graphics card which you can currently pick up for only 499 dollars 99 with the included promo code making it 40 dollars off which makes it the same exact price as the 7800 xt that's coming out next week that's true. It, don't buy this deal. <laughs> it's a deal, but don't buy it because you got a new GPU launching literally next week for the same price. However, what could happen is that AMD doesn't make enough of them and there's a supply shortage. He's undoing my deals. And with that, the deals are done. Oh. He's swapping. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> my legs hurt. I'm moving already. Proud of you. you got legs back. <laughs> I did. Thank you for that bad deal. Some people said it was a bad deal yesterday because Asus allegedly, according to rumors, was shutting down their Zenfone division, which made a lot of people upset because the Zenfone 10 reviewed very well across multiple different platforms. It's priced really affordably, has a great feature set. People are like, we love the Zenfone 10. Why would they be shutting it down? Turns out they're not. Asus coming out and saying, we'd like to address the rumor that the Asus Zenfone 10 will be the last generation of the series and the Asus Zenfone product line will be shut down. This is not true. We will continue our two main phone business product lines, the ROG phone and the Zen phone. They have a strong commitment to their smartphone business and customers. I personally didn't like it. I thought it looked like it had googly eyes. Is that your biggest problem with yeah, it? Yeah, that okay. was my biggest problem with it. Well, you also rock an iPhone SE, which hopefully we might get announced because Apple just announced their Wonderlust event Ooh. that's going to be taking place on September 22nd. But this one doesn't have an AR Easter egg in the announcement, so people are really upset about it. But what it does have is blue and Titan gray in it. September 12th. I said the 22nd. My misspeaking. How dare you? I, oh, no. We're going to get an expose. It's a code troop. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Code screw. Proud of you, Kyla. You had tried. You tried. So what we are expecting is an iPhone 15, 15 Plus Pro, and Pro Max. But there have been some rumors out there that the SE fourth gen, third gen, I can't remember, Who knows might also potentially point? be coming out. Uh, people who care about this would know, Reese. Who knows? Uh, okay, who knows? not Reese doesn't know. So in case you've been waiting for an iPhone with USB-C and an action button, no longer a little alert slider toggle, that should be happening. In case you've been waiting to game on a 192 core Linux server oh boy. machine, Ampere has decided to just, for some reason, come out with publication on how you can take their massive Ultra Max CPUs and game on Linux with them. That's... They published a GitHub repository so that you can use Proton and all of that to game on these servers, which does not make a lick of financial sense, which is exactly why we likely will see a Linus Tech Tips video on this coming out in a couple of months as soon as they get their hands on a 192 core server chip. I kind of like this. It's I so, would like it, to do this video. It's so odd that like I want to know what happens. If I could afford one of these chips, I would make this video. This is the type of video we were making back in South Africa mm -hmm. when we still had our full setup, which behind the scenes we're trying to build up again. Kyler's working over there trying to do new things. I just dropped the phone. Did you? Mm -hmm. Is it broken? It was on purpose. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not feasible, but you could potentially do it. I hope this next thing is feasible, though. At uh -oh. Computex, companies yeah. talked about how they could supply GPU power in non-normal ways, with Asus showing off a board connector that could supply the power for a graphics card. Now, the GPU they used wasn't very high power, but now we have specifications coming out for the HPCE connector, which is what they're calling that little addition on the side of the graphics card right there that can which deliver. I love this. It cleans so much up. You just plug everything into the motherboard. Just What's the point of the motherboard if you can't plug everything into it? I've been saying. I just, I'm tired of not plugging things into my Mambo. 
Why wasn't this a thing 10 years ago? So the specifications indicate that this can support up to at least 600 watts of power, enough for the 4090s that are out there currently. They don't say what the max power delivery is, but they say that it can easily support the 600 watts 4090 stuff. So there we go. We'll see where if this moves forward, if we can get that connector coming out to Mambos and GPUs anytime soon. As long as they don't lock it down, just. Oh, that would suck. Yeah. That would that would be bad. But you know what? AMD's not locking down the 6650 XT anymore. According to reports, that Navi 23 GPU not being produced. The uh -oh. factory has stopped production and all these companies need to wind down actually selling them. We've been seeing a clearance happening over in China. It turns out 6650 XT has been one of the best bang for buck cards over the last year. Just 2023 was a solid year for this GPU. Currently going for like 250 bucks over everywhere uh it, 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 compared to other gpus that were on the market before you know the 7600 or the 4060 this thing kind of wiped the floor with a lot of rip 6650 xt too soon always in my heart but i don't care about that you know why because i want to talk about intel's gpus because we got reports coming out on battle mage because i don't know if you remember this reese but there are certain individuals out there yelling that the battle mage gaming graphics card lineup was gonna die i remember this do so you remember this and i refuse to believe it number one out of my heart number two out of just they were the only people reporting it and it wasn't corroborated yeah. anywhere else and like even the ceo had to come out and be like i don't i don't know what you're talking it's about. all dying we're not canceling it it turns out at the malaysia intel tour that was going on last week people saw it they saw the chip they saw the BMG G10 chip in the failure analysis lab, which does not mean it's a failure. It just means that they broke it and they got to analyze why. Okay, that's that's totally fine. So hardware luck saying that they came across a tray from the next gen chips, the Battle Mage GPUs, which according to Intel's own roadmap should be potentially launching early next year. But if it's already in the lab, which they said was only early enabling, I hope that's lab, I'm hoping which I, I probably am not reading this right. Early enabling, I would hope that means it's in the lab. So they shifted it up because it's, it's Q3 right now. Mm -hmm. So that they're back here. Maybe maybe Battle Mage announcement at CES? I'll take it. I would I'll love that. It. Intel GPUs to compete price-wise, all of that. Probably not. This is just me hoping way too much, but it, we're, at we're least- putting it out there into the universe. That's what we want. And what people wanted yesterday was more comment response. And Reese, you were not here yesterday I, at all. I people were just, scared. I was totally here. You guys just didn't see me. <laughs> So yesterday's episode of Hot News was about the Lenovo Legion Go as well as several other topics as well as Stalker 2 getting delayed with whatever you say fam saying Stalker 2 can take as long as they need. I have faith in them and with the current situation in Ukraine, this was no surprise for me. Yeah, when I'm a big fan of the Stalker franchise, I love the original game. Was there more than the original game? Yeah, there was like a, a whole... I thought it was like DLC that was added on. No, not quite. Okay. It was a separate game. Okay. Uh, but the whole thing is... The moment every I saw everything going down in Ukraine, I was like, oh, Stalker 2 is going to get the It did, yeah. <laughs> Sparky Space Gaming says, love the comment response segment. I have a lot of opinions on the topics during my breakfast, but don't like to comment. Hey, you know what? That makes you actually kind of normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Making it known that you're listening, though not necessary, incentivizes me to speak my mind, as everyone should. Thanks for keeping the community in mind and keep up the good work. Love the show. Thank you, Sparky Space Gaming. Emilio Mendez saying, hey, just want to say that I love hot news and thank you for doing it. I don't want to read that praise anymore because thank you anyways i would have never guessed that the handheld market was going to be so big i love mm. that amd's new tech is allowing the market to grow but when the nintendo switch launched i would have never guessed they were going to have all these new handhelds same i didn't picture the current landscape that we have being what it is especially with how good handhelds have got you know what i've been beating this drum since like 2019 not including the switch but i have just been talking about how gosh dang good andy's apus have been mm -hmm. and we're just seeing the fruits of that as they've continued to march on the apu game we're getting the less powerful but more efficient and therefore more performant in a handheld environment coming out the switch has whatever the frick nvidia gave it from 2015 that they're on Max, they're on maxwell yeah. it's friggin friggin old but when you have latest gen stuff you can start doing a whole lot with it i'm very nice. excited good space to be in deep test loves tech says i see handhelds not as handhelds but as ultra small form factor pcs with battery and screen that's what a handheld is my guy Yep. I don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you're saying. Okay. If, if you, maybe like comparing a handheld to like a Nintendo 3DS or something. That's what my brain goes to. Uh, like a handheld. Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I guess. But the Switch kind of changed the entire conversation yeah, around yeah. handhelds, and I feel like the Steam Deck, 
falls right into that. The ROG ally falls right in. But Deep Tesh saying that in that aspect, the ally wins due to better external GPU support. Legion Go does not have Oculink, unfortunately. The ally has some weird proprietary crap that you have to spend a like a thousand dollars on to get an actual GPU. Like the Ally just also makes it prohibitive to have external GPUs. The the only companies that I think are winning in the external GPU is GPD and Aya Neo. Yeah, I just I, plug my external graphics card in, no problem. Yeah, the RG Ally does not win for external graphics card support, despite the fact that it has it. I disagree heavily. Stephen Hart says, where is Reese? You should have kept him in the US. I was really digging the dynamic duo episodes. Where is he? I actually miss not having you here. And it, it made me think of what will I do when you're gone? And I was like, <laughs> Kyler's just gonna have to waste his afternoon filming hot news with me. Cause Sorry, I, Kyler. I can't, I don't, it doesn't feel normal to do it alone anymore. <laughs> James Cavanaugh said the Reeselessness is actually a little weird. Yeah, what's up with that guy? And then either mind said, can we start a petition to get Reese citizenship? Is that a thing? <laughs> it's it's not a <laughs> only it worked like that. Listen, I we Reese can't stay. He has to go home at some point. Goodbye. I can't pull any more levers than I have. He, I, he has to marry an American. That's basically all we have. I don't see no ring on that finger, unfortunately. Ronald Hunt says, thank you for mentioning the issues with ports from consoles to PC. The usual rant from gamers is to blame GPU makers that there's not enough VRAM or that the gameplay is poor. What you can expect when developers just want the quickest and cheapest shortcut to making a ton of cash, all increasing VRAM will do is giving those developers more headroom to keep releasing stuff not optimized for PC. I wanted to bring this up because I, I do think that there were conflated arguments in the VRAM debacle we had earlier this year a lot of it was these ports suck like the last yeah. of us was a bad port jedi survivor was a bad port like the vram issue isn't the real problem here it's actually the port itself but i also want to push back on you saying that it's the game devs who are doing it where it's actually the game publishers typically or the studios that are making this happen game devs are incredibly passionate. They care about their craft, they care about their work. But what happens is that the people who make the money decisions then say, you gotta rush it out. You have to get mm -hmm. it done. This is not, I would not put it on the developers as being the greedy scummy ones here. They don't it's wanna... just, their they... names are tied to the yeah. ports. Developers are making bad ports, but at the same time, it's not entirely their fault. We actually had this, uh conversation earlier in the office today it's i always loved the the whole sentiment of pc gamers saying you know thanks for beta testing our games for us but then we're getting ports on this level it's it's rough yeah it's rough it's rough although there are some devs who are just trying to make a quick buck so oh, yeah. not all game devs are spotless but by and large from what i can gather when when there's a problem with a games it's not the developers who were so cyberpunk wasn't buggy because the people making the game were bad it it was financial reasons that they ended up being that way einstein saying i'm not sure if these guys understand that we don't need such high resolution screens the steam deck is perfect proof they would have gone 720p which would significantly improve performance i actually agree with you i also think that having the ability to have a higher resolution screen is also a good thing. It improves sharpness and clarity in certain regards. When I use my Rogue Ally, I'm not playing at 1080p. I'm playing at 720p. Same with me and my Ionia. And I, I don't want the higher resolution screen for gaming, but I want it for using it as a general Windows device where text Christmas and all of that comes into play. I prefer it for that reason. But I also think the Steam Deck is not perfect proof because the Steam Deck should have a 720p, 120 hertz screen. I do think that uh, like Deck HD upgrade that came out recently, yeah. that was like 1200p. I don't think that's necessary because the Steam Deck is really just a gaming console. Yeah. Not many people are using that in a desktop environment, but the Windows handhelds are, that are coming out are typically more, you know, I, I can also Windows do Windows things yeah. on it, which higher resolution does help for that. And with that, this episode's done. Thank you for tuning in to Hot News. We'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends. Or will I? When are you leaving?